All right, today what I want to do is a short Neuron Writer video. I want to talk about content queries. I think people underestimate the importance of content queries, but it is the uh, foundational piece of any work that you do in the tool. You really can't do much with Neuron Writer unless you start with a content query. So if you're new to Neuron Writer, this is where you're going to start your work with the tool. Neuron Writer is an SEO optimization tool. It's a really good one. I've used it for quite some time. And right now, just for people that don't have the tool, it is available on AppSumo. It's a lifetime deal. It starts at $89. So essentially with Neuron Writer, you buy a plan that's either one code, two codes, or three codes. Last year, Neuron Writer won the Community Tool of the Year at AppSumo. It's good for bloggers, copywriters, marketing agencies. It allows you to optimize your articles so you have a chance to rank higher in Google. And it does rank articles in a couple of ways. You can do it using entities. You can do it with NLP keywords. It's very easy to, to use the tool. I have quite a few tutorials on Neuron Writer. And so, so here's the thing when you buy in at Neuron Writer. I just want to mention this briefly on the pricing. If you buy in at $89, if you have no SEO optimization tool at all, and $89 is what you can afford, I would suggest buying the tool. One reason why is Neuron Writer was on AppSumo for a while, then it was off. Now it's back on AppSumo. It's been on for, I think, about six months. I don't know how much longer it's going to be on AppSumo, to tell you the truth. I'm surprised it stayed on as long as it has. If you don't have an SEO optimization tool, I highly recommend grabbing Neuron Writer while it's still available. We're going to talk about content queries today and notice that at a single code, you can do 25 content queries a month. Content queries are the basis of everything that you're going to do in Neuron Writer. So the more that you have to work with, the better. But the big deal is when you buy at three codes, you're going to get standard advanced and custom AI templates. If you look at any of my other Neuron Writer tutorials, you will have to have advanced AI templates to perform some of the activities that I show in some of my other tutorials. With that out of the way, I'm going to pop over to Low Fruits. Now, why am I in Low Fruits? It's my favorite keyword research tool. But every content query starts with a keyword. Beyond needing an SEO optimization tool, you also have to be able to do some keyword research. Now, there are free ways to do keyword research. There's lots of tutorials that talk about that. If you do keyword research manually with no keyword research tools, it can be pretty time consuming. So Low Fruits is a tool that I use. It's very inexpensive. There's a link in the video description. So I'm going to choose this keyword, why is fly fishing equipment so expensive? I'm going to copy that. Now we get started with the content query. When you open Neuron Writer, you'll see all your projects. I'm going to open this one. Now to perform a new query, here's what you do. You click new query, then you can go in and you can put in this keyword, why is fly fishing equipment so expensive? And you can click start. So now your query is running. And you'll see this little bar on the side here. This will tell you how much of the query has been performed. So it's going through, it's performing that query. You're going to see that I've got my Neuron Writer set up for targeting the English language, United States. All right, so the query is complete. So you can see here, it's got fairly low competition. I can update this and see the search volume notice down below when I click on this. It says keyword volumes are usually updated within five minutes. You may need to reload the page to see the updated value. It tells you the analysis date. It shows you this keyword volume trend. There doesn't happen to be anything in here now. And then you can assign this to people. So what I want to do is jump over to some other content queries that I performed. Here are some of the other things that you can learn from content queries. Sometimes if something has a zero search volume, you're not going to see a volume trend. But let's say you have something like this particular content query I did, how to get started mountain biking. So it tells you that it has some competition, right? It's a three. 
So it definitely has competition. It has 70 searches a month. Now, search volume, sometimes you can write blog posts on zero volume keywords and actually get quite a bit of traffic. But let's go ahead and take a look at the volume trend. Typically, mountain biking is somewhat of a seasonal activity in the beginning of the year, not so much activity on this particular keyword. And then when you get into the summer months, you get a lot of activity, spring and summer. That's when biking really is popular. And then, of course, in the later months, not so much. It tells you the date the analysis is done. If I was actually going to write this article, I'd run this query again because it's over three months old. And so when a query is over three months old, the search engine ranking pages can change. And so you want to be using the latest data that you can to complete an article. But here you can assign this to a person. So if you click here, you can assign it to somebody else on your team. If you happen to have enough codes that it allows you to have multiple users with Neuron Writer, you could assign it to somebody else. So for instance, if I just assign it to Mike, I say, okay, then you can see who it's assigned to. If you want somebody to complete the SEO optimization in the article by a certain date, you can add that. Another thing that you can do is you can tag a content query. If you are done with this content query, you can just select done. It has a variety of different things here that you can tag a content query with. It just helps you keep things sort of in order so you understand what's going on. And it also helps with the filtering. If you just want to see in progress content queries, obviously this tab would be selected. If you want, if you only want to see the ones that have been tagged as done, here are ones that have been tagged as done. If you want to see ones that have been deleted, here's all the content queries that I've deleted. There's a lot more going on in content queries than just putting in a keyword and starting an SEO optimization. Here's a perfect example of why you want to pay attention to this content query data. Look at container gardening for beginners. These volume trends do help you understand whether this is something that uh, is very seasonal. So that's why I like to look at these. I would probably prefer to write articles on topics that aren't quite as seasonal. So I've got uh, traffic coming to an article throughout the year. But again, that's how you can use these volume dates. Let's go ahead and talk about some of these menu items that you see across the top of content queries. So you can toggle column searches if you want to. What you can do is remove and add columns. But if you want to do a column search and you're interested in something like, oh, fly fishing, it's going to return everything that's a content query on fly fishing. You can go through column by column and do searching. If you want to do a search, this is a good one to do, content competition. Let's say you've got a bunch of queries that you've run, or maybe somebody's run queries and assigned them to you, and you want to start with the lowest competition optimizations first. You can just put zero in there, and then all of the zero competition content queries will show. That's the way that you would use that filtering capability. You can toggle it on, toggle it off. You can export this table in an XLS format. If you want to just take this whole table and email it to somebody, you can do that. You can also turn columns on and off. You can show and hide these columns here just by clicking on something. For instance, if I want to turn off the analysis date, I can do that or I can turn it on sign to on and off. So you can toggle all these on and off, makes it easier to track the particular columns that you think are the most important to you. And then you can also do filtering. You can click this filter and then you can hide and show different things. Let's say you want to do some filtering and you want to do it on competition range. You can click here, you can put in a zero, blue check mark, then you can do three, check that, turn off the filtering. And then when you go back in and you look at all your content queries, now the only queries that you're going to see revealed are the ones that have a content competition score of zero through three. So that's a good way if you want to knock off those easier to rank for uh, optimizations first, that's what you could do with the filtering. If you want to turn the filtering off for that, for example, you just have to go in, click on the zero, delete it, click the blue check mark, 
click on the three, delete it, click on the blue check mark, turn the filtering off. There are tons of things that you can do within the content query section. Again, typically what you're going to be doing is just running a new query and running through a full optimization. But many times I will do multiple content queries at one time. So for example, if you're in the advanced settings, you can go in, you can do multiple content query analysis at once. This is where you would go to your tool like Low Fruits and you'd pop in this and you'd pop in this. Let's grab another one. We'll do one more. You have to have this toggle turned on, create multiple analyses at once. And then you put your long tail keywords in here and then you click start. So when you click start, what it's going to do, it's going to actually go through. It's going to analyze all three of these uh, long tail keywords at once. So it's a great way if you've saved up this long list of keywords that you know you want to analyze and you just want to do it all in one shot instead of doing it one by one. You can do that. You can go away, do something else, come back and then do your optimizations. So one last thing that I want to mention is if you do a new query, you can also just optimize existing content. So I copied that URL. Now what I can do is go in and I can ask it to optimize this page. Then you want to also put in the query. In this case, obviously, you can tell from the URL, it's how long does it take to get monetized on YouTube. And you just type that in. When you, when you have it typed in, you click start. And now it's going to go in. And this is the target URL. And we're going to re-optimize this page. Then you can go in and rewrite your article. You can look and see if any of the basic and extended keywords have changed. You can see if you need to add some of those. You can use look at the optimization and see if you need to make some adjustments to the header. There are just lots of things that you can do to re-optimize a page and make it better, make it more search engine friendly. Uh, I hope you found it useful because there's lots of things that are going on on this content queries page. And again, it's the basis and foundation for everything that you do in Neuron Writer. If you don't have Neuron Writer, go to the link in my video description. It'll take you to AppSumo. I'm an affiliate at AppSumo, so I will get a small commission if you make a purchase through that link. And I appreciate you supporting the channel. Until next time, Take care.